everyone, I have been waiting a long time to review this film, and let me tell you now, this is gonna be fun. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Raider Reviews, the first and only review show on the Raider News channel. My name is Ben Friedman, and today we're going to be taking a look at a film that took the world by storm. This film shocked audiences everywhere, coming right out of the blue, pulling in $266 million at the box office and winning a leading four Academy Awards. Let's take a look at this year's Best Picture Oscar winner and Best Picture Moscow nominee, Parasite. Released in South Korea on May 30th, 2019, and written and directed by the one, the only, Bong Joon-ho, this film has been praised by pretty much everyone, and has been heralded as one of the best films of the decade, pulling in a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 4.6 total average rating on the movie review app Letterboxd, which, at the time of this filming, makes it the highest grossing narrative film on the entire site. And get this, it even beat out The Godfather to do so. Yeah, The Godfather. A movie heralded as one of the greatest films of all time, beat out by Parasite. Those are incredibly high marks, which leads to the question, does it live up to all the praise? Well, in short, yes, it most certainly does, but I'll go more in depth. However, before we do that, this episode's going to be a little bit different than normal. Parasite is a film best watched with as little known about it as possible. That's how I watched it the first time, and it was incredible. However, it's hard to talk about all of this film without going into spoiler territory. So with that said, everything past our second point in the good will have a very big spoiler warning in front of it. And at that time, a time marker will flash to take you to the bottom line, which will be fully spoiler free. Got all that? Good. Let's head to the good. Number one, the production design. This film's production design is the definition of simple, but effective. The film primarily takes place in one location, the lavish home of the equally lavish and very wealthy Park family. The ha this house is, to put it lightly, gorgeous. It has such a simple and sleek look that anyone can enjoy. And the most interesting thing, it was built entirely from scratch. You heard that right, the deluxe living space where most of this film takes place in yeah, that rhymed. It was created and thought up all by writer and director Bong Joon-ho, and every single detail is thought out, from the landscaping to the lights, and most of all, the basement, but all will be revealed in due time. But what about the other side of the coin with the less well-off Kim family? Well, they live in a basement apartment with barely any room for privacy. It provides a great contrast to the large park mansion, who which almost has too much space, and pulls back the curtains on how a lot of lower class citizens live every single day, making the story that much more impactful for viewers. Number two, the writing. I'm going to try my absolute hardest not to spoil anything, so please just bear with me. The screenplay of this film, to put it bluntly, is just fantastic. It manages to work out things like pace, comedy, world building, and storytelling beats perfectly. The script manages to be so witty and shocking, creating this amazing story right from the ground up, with some truly wild moments which we'll talk about very soon. And if you're concerned about all the reading that has to be done due to this film being in Korean, don't be worried at all. You'll be so invested in the story and the clever writing that you won't want to look away. Like Bong himself said, Once you overcome the one inch tall barrier of subtitles, you will be introduced to so many more amazing films. <laughs> All right, everyone. We are now entering spoiler territory. If you haven't seen this film, then I implore that you click off of this video, go onto your Hulu that either you own or are stealing from someone else, and watch Parasite. And if you have seen this movie, then follow me, and let's continue with the review. Number three, the story. At the start, this story seems like a traditional tale of betrayal and class divide, and it's interesting to see first how the Kims lie, cheat, and steal their way into the lives of the parks. But about midway through, the film takes a complete 180 and becomes so much more. After discovering what, 
and who is living in the basement, this film becomes a story of revenge and constantly rising tensions. This film keeps you on the edge of your seat as layer upon layer upon layer of story continues to be added. And the best part is, it doesn't affect everything in the film that's been built up to that point. It keeps enhancing everything, actually, and gives us one of the best payoffs in any film I've ever seen. It's a film that keeps you invested from the story and never takes the foot off the gas until the very end. Now, despite all of this and more, there are still some not so great things about this film. But trust me, this part won't take long at all. Let's get to the bad. Number one, the motivation of the Kim family. Now, this is a very minor issue, but I still think it's something to be mentioned nonetheless. When Ki Woo, aka Kevin, is hired as the new English tutor for Dahai, and Mrs. Park mentions how they need a new art tutor, Ki Woo instantly thinks of and gets his sister Ki Jong the job. Now, my question with that is pretty simple. How did Ki Woo instantly think of and get Ki Jong to agree to this nefarious plan? And as the film goes on and the Kims become infiltrated in the park's lives, why do none of the members of the Kim family feel any remorse for how they've taken one of the most immoral paths into their lives? I mean, sure, I understand why the Kims did some of what they did, but I think a scene of them voicing some sort of concern or regret for all they've done would have been great as well as the scene with them coming up with said plan to infiltrate their lives instead of things just kind of happening right the hell out of nowhere. It would have boosted the impact of the story just a little bit and made the Kims just a little bit more humanized in the process. <laughs> Number two, the relationship between Ki Wu and Da Hai. When Ki Wu enters the Park household and begins to tutor their oldest daughter to Hai, love begins to bloom and an unlikely relationship begins to form. However, the relationship kinda doesn't go anywhere. It just kinda happens and then it's gone, just like that pretty much. I mean, it's mentioned a few other times in the story, but other than that, it's kinda pointless. I mean, it's somewhat ironic because Ki Woo's college buddy picked him for that job because he you know, he wanted to date to high and he didn't think that Ki Woo would go after her. I don't know, man. It just feels like something that should have been left out. Number three. This one goes out to a certain line in the film when Ki Woo states this is so metaphorical when gazing upon the family's new wealth rock gifted to him by the aforementioned college buddy. Yeah, this isn't my favorite line. Far from it, actually. This line is uttered several other times after that scene, and it just feels a little too obvious, like too much of a wink and a nod towards the audience. And even if you consider it something like a fourth wall break, it's not a very good fourth wall break. It just feels like it's dumbing down whatever metaphor the film was trying to present with just a line that's a little too on the nose. But otherwise, it's a very small mistake in a overall amazing film. Let's go to the bottom line. The bottom line. Parasite is everything it's cracked up to be. It is an absolutely amazing film that you have to see to believe. It's everything you could want in a film and more, and everything you've heard from all the critics, the Oscars even, the Golden Globes, it couldn't be closer to the truth. Des despite its very small problems, it's a bona fide masterpiece, and it gets five stars, no questions asked. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and such. Look out for all the videos coming up on the Raider News channel as well. My name is Ben Friedman. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.